Hello everybody, welcome back to You Brink Studio. My name's Anita, in case you haven't come across me before, and I am the owner of You Brink Studio, which is in West Norfolk. We are currently working on a challenge for February called Time for Tea, where we're working with old tea bags, which we've turned into tea bag paper and fabrics ready for use. This particular piece that I'm working on at the moment, which I'm going to show you a few more bits to, as a piece of solid tea bag paper, which I have dyed in the tea, which are these colors here. And then I have added some Bista color, which is this red and this really dark brown up here into the tea, screwed it all up, left it for a little while. And uh, then I ironed it and when you iron it, the color and the pattern really comes out. Then on top of that, I have stamped, which is the flower. And if I bring that in a bit closer, hopefully you can see that I have machine stitched the leaves. I'm now hand stitching the flowers and I'm using a variegated thread. Now, people give me their old threads, which I absolutely love. And sometimes they come to me like this, which is a mess. And I have a number of friends that would have to sit here and unravel it all and put it onto a little card and make it look very pretty and nice and neat. I don't, because I don't care. I will just use it as I go. So this is what I'm using. It's cotton and the variegated color means that you can then decide where you want to sew and you'll find that your patterns are already coming out for you. Now this particular stitch that I'm using on these flowers is called Lazy Daisy. Uh, which is basically a chain stitch, but you're only doing one chain at a time. And because we're going round in a circle, it looks like daisies. So I'm just going to adjust the camera and I'm hoping I don't get my hands in the way so that you can actually see what I'm doing, which would be quite good, wouldn't it? So let's just bring that down there. Okay. If you hear clicking, it's the iron because I have got it on behind me. So I'm going to, I've, finish this piece I'm now going to work on this one and I'm going to come up in the center the beauty of this stitch is that you can just keep working it over and over again and I am going to adjust that a tiny bit more okay so hold this out of the way and when you go in, you go back in just beside where you came out and then come out where you want to. So however big your stitch is going to be, this thread that you've held out of the way has to come underneath and pull. So you have Anita, a twisted chain stitch, which is not part of the plan. There we go. So we have one chain. We then come on the outside of that chain to anchor it down. Now when you're hand stitching using old threads like this, you can see that, you can use beeswax or a sawyer wax that you can run along the thread that will stop curling it up. Now my thread's too long, I don't mind working with a longer thread, but the rule of thumb is your thread should be no longer than from your elbow to your hand. If you've got it longer than that, you may have problems. So the next stitch comes up again in the center. Okay. Bring that through. Hold it out of the way. Back in at the center. Come out where you want it to be. And remember, you have to come up in the loop. So now we have two stitches and we're going to go on the outside of that stitch to anchor it down. Come up again in the middle. Now this paper I have on the back of here put some bonder web to give it uh, a little bit of substance but also because I'm going to put it in a book of samples that I'm doing so um, all I've got to do is iron it in. So remember, we're coming up in the loop. The thread has to come on, the needle has to come up on the inside of the thread. 
and then we anchor it down by going over the stitch okay I hope you can see that okay so keep going round until you've got the desired effect now you can keep going over yourself and over yourself until you've built it up and built it up even up to um, a really nice 3d flower if you want to that's not going to work too well on here because it's paper but if you were doing that on a fabric it would turn out to be fabulous I'm just going to keep going round. Uh, you can make these as big or as small as you like. So um, this piece here and this one here, tiny, tiny little stitches, but they're still lazy daisy. Okay. Now you decide how much you want to do with this because this is your work, nobody else's. You can keep going over yourself, you can keep coming through and under, you can go over stitches, you can leave gaps. You know, this is your work, this is not down to anybody else telling you how to work it. You can twist them as well if you wanted to, because they twist quite nicely. But it all depends what it is that you want. I have to turn this this way now because otherwise I won't be able to do it. And if you have done as I've just done, I don't know if you can see that. So I've got quite a big gap here in between that stitch and that stitch. So I shall come up in the middle and just come over here. It doesn't matter. Give you more depth to your work. If you want perfect daisies, of course, you would plot out where you're going to put them, your stitches. So you would think about whether you want five or seven or any more numbered stitches. Personally, I always try to do an odd number. And there we go, that's another one finished. I don't want to put any more on that. So I'm going to continue along here. And then that's another sample to go into my little sample book that I'm making. But I'll probably do a big one of these. I'm going to paint the top. I'll show it to you when I've painted it so that it's more blue. And this bit here might be a little bit more dramatic with the blue. I'm just going to lift that up so you can actually see me talking to you instead of somebody's hands. Old lady hands. So um, this would make a really nice book cover. It would also make um, a nice lampshade cover. But the only thing is that you would see the holes where the threads have gone through because of it being paper on a lampshade. So you have to decide whether you want to do that or not. If not, you could back it onto some really nice fabric where the holes won't show through. Um, what you have to think about is test it where in front of a light so that you can see and decide if that's for you or not. But um, it would make a nice book cover. It would make a nice bag as well. Um, anything like that, which would just snip that off. Um, which would be quite nice too. Or you could just frame it and have it as a picture. So that's just another idea for those of you that have got so far with your work and a number of you have contacted me and said, well, I've dyed it and I've painted it, I've stamped onto it, what do I do with it now? So maybe that will help you a little bit. I hope so. So I look forward to seeing your finished pieces. Some of them have already started to come through. Um, they are on my Facebook page. So if you pop over there and have a look, you just need to look up Eubrink Studio, which is spelt E-A-U-B-R-I-N-K-S-T-U-D-I-O. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.